starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have SIM cards. We see all the time in movies and shows when people are trying to be super secret, they smash their phone and their SIM card, but as it turns out, maybe we should all be smashing our SIM cards, super secret lifestyle or not. In February of 2015, it was reported that Snowden provided documents that showed that the NSA and GCHQ had hacked into a Dutch company that is responsible for manufacturing and supplying 2 billion SIM cards per year, and they supply places like AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and a variety of other providers. While this hack would suggest that the agencies would then now have access to billions of unique encryption keys, which could potentially allow them to bypass wireless providers and monitor both voice and data transmissions of every user that has a SIM card made by this company. The company did reply to the situation and said that they had been the target of at least two, quote, particularly sophisticated intrusions, and they suggested that they believed that the NSA and the GCHQ were responsible, but the company then denied that the hack was successful in gaining access to those encryption keys. In our ninth spot, we have Project Mannequin. What's scary is that the US government might still be working on this project had it not been for several whistleblowers exposing them. Basically, they were working on this project known as Project Mannequin, which was basically them trying to produce super soldiers. They were going to kidnap people at a young age and then groom them to become cold-blooded killers. They also were going to take kids being given up for adoption and do the same to them. They would then use mind control and other techniques to create these soldiers. But Max Spears blew the whistle on this project only later to die under mysterious circumstances. And then when investigators came to his house, they wiped his computer and SIM card clean. That is incredibly suspicious. What do they not want us to know? Moving on to number eight, we have Operation Sleeping Beauty. Operation Sleeping Beauty was a psychological warfare program in which the government was going to use high power electromagnetic pulses to disturb soldiers on the battlefields. You know how sometimes high frequencies or sounds drive us insane? Well, they were going to use that to manipulate enemy soldiers so that they would surrender. Rumor has it that the government was using real human test subjects for this project of course, against their will. Although the government claims this project is over, some believe it's still in the works, just under a new name. In our seventh spot, we have Robert P. Hansen. Robert Hansen was an FBI double agent. While working for the FBI, he was simultaneously working for Soviet and Russian intelligences. So he was feeding them top secret information. In fact, he sold thousands of classified documents to the Soviet and Russian intelligences. These documents outlined US strategies with regards to nuclear wars and exposed developments in the military's weapons and detailed aspects of the US counterintelligence program. His espionage was considered as possibly the worst intelligence disaster in US history. In our sixth spot, we have Project QK Hilltop. This is a very, very controversial and unethical project by the CIA. Basically, around this time, the Chinese were using brainwashing techniques, so the CIA was like, hmm, maybe we should try this too. Not only did they brainwash their victims, they also tortured and deprived them of sleep. The head of the experiment was Dr. Harold Wolf, and he knew that testing on human subjects was unethical, but that still didn't stop him or the government from conducting these tests. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Operation Midnight Climax. I just wanna know who named this one, oh my. Anyways, this project began in the 1950s and it involved a CIA run brothel with real workers. They got the workers to lure men there and then drug them with LSD and record what happened. It was the government's way of getting top secret information or to get blackmail material on people. And of course, this project was controversial for a number of reasons. Eventually, it was shut down in the 1960s. In our fourth spot, we have the Watergate scandal. This is one scandal that is still discussed to this day it's for sure gonna go down in history. So on June 17th, 1972, five men working for the committee to reelect the president broke into the Democratic Party's headquarters in the Watergate, a hotel office building in Washington. But they got caught going through the files and trying to plant listening devices there. Five days later, President Nixon was like, no, I have nothing to know about this. Wow, shocker. 
he denied his involvement. But we all know that this was his plan to ensure his re-election in 1972. The scandal gets messier though, and he faced the possibility of impeachment. In fact, Nixon became the first president to resign from office in August of 1974. In our third spot, we have Project Grudge. For quite some time now, the US government has been secretly monitoring UFOs. In fact, they even have tried to make their own craft, but that's a completely different project altogether and we'll, we'll address that another time. Project Grudge was all about finding out about UFO sightings and then debunking these sightings. However, not all the sightings could be debunked, leading many to believe that they could have been real UFO spacecrafts. This project is still ongoing, just possibly under a different name. In 2017, there were tons of UFO sightings reported that they were investigating. In our second spot today, we have Bigfoot. Imagine the FBI spending thousands of dollars tracking a legendary monster. How would that make you feel? They could be out solving real life crime or murder cases, but no, they're trying to see if the Bigfoot is really real. And that's why this next project was so controversial. The FBI was keeping tabs on and tracking the Bigfoot. In the FBI's Freedom of Information Library, you can find the FBI's file on Bigfoot. These files are only released when the subject is deceased. So they believe that not only was the Bigfoot a real beast, but they believe that it is now dead. But what about its relatives though? Like there has to be more than one Bigfoot out there. And in our number one spot today, we have the hepatitis experiments. In 1956, the US government began running tests on young individuals housed at the Willow Brook State School in Staten Island. The test involved intentionally giving hepatitis to these residents in order to track the development of this viral infection. Of course, they were being experimented on without their knowledge or consent. To make matters worse, the study lasted 14 years. And they also injected a number of these test subjects with other viruses to see its protection against hepatitis. When the government was exposed, they tried to justify their actions, saying that these people were probably going to wind up contracting it anyway. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the forgery. So for this one, we are talking about a scandal that happened that was entirely built on a lie but this scandal is one that affected national politics at the time. So a man named Alfred Dreyfus was a Jewish officer in the French army in the late 19th century, but he was accused of treason as it was said he was selling military secrets to Germany. His trial was huge in the media and he ended up being sentenced to life imprisonment on Devil's Island and hateful and prejudiced groups used him as an example of a quote unpatriotic Jewish person. After this sentence, however, people began to suspect that the letters that incriminated him were actually forged and that the real culprit was a major named Charles Esterhazy. It is said that the French authorities tried to suppress these accusations, but a novelist named Emily Zola continued to accuse the army of a cover-up. People were torn at this point. Some people swore that Alfred was still to blame, while others were convinced he was innocent. In the end, the fight became more about the principle rather than whether or not Alfred was really innocent or not. There were 12 years of controversy surrounding this case until Major Hubert Joseph Henry ended up admitting to forging the key documents before taking his own life. The case was finally reopened and while Alfred was found guilty again, he soon received a pardon from the president. A few years after this, a civilian court of appeals found Alfred innocent as well and he went on to have quite an army career and he even fought with honor in the first world war. This was a scandal that really did change French politics forever. Number 9. Quantum Computer This next Next one is eye-opening, to say the least. Computers are getting more and more advanced by the day. Deep fakes are going to ruin my life. They're getting really good at those. I feel like an old man every time I see those and fall for it. But thanks to our man Snowden, it was reported in the Washington Post on January 2nd, 2014, that the NSA is working hard at creating their own computer. How fun must that be? It's called the quantum computer and it cost about $80 million to create. And no, it can't send you back in time. This computer is safely stored in a massive room-sized metal box, which is not intimidating at all. And it's part of a program called Penetrating Hard Targets. I want to make so many jokes, but I won't. So it can break encryptions for just about anything. Finance records, medical, your old MSN, probably. What a nightmare that would be. The NSA is well on their way to breaking every form of public encryption. This quantum computer can theoretically break through any RSA encryption, which for the average computer today, that takes, I don't know, 
years, but this supercomputer can break through a lot faster. I'm talking days. Just don't go in my MSN, please. In our number eight spot today, we have Project Dishfire. It was reported by The Guardian that it had been revealed that the NSA collects 200 million text messages a day from around the world. They then use these messages to pull the details of certain location information, contact networks, and the credit card details of different mobile users. It was also reported that the NSA also provided British intelligence agencies with all of the data, just without the actual context of the text messages. So the NSA has all your secrets and nudies, but at least they didn't share them? I don't know. Basically they have all of this data and at any point could potentially extract certain information like past travel plans, your financial transactions, your contacts, regardless of whether or not you were being investigated for something. Yes, this sounds illegal, unethical, and a little shady, and this revelation all came before former President Barack Obama gave a speech about proposed policy changes in reaction to the whistleblowing that was going on around Snowden and the NSA. Number seven, friends without benefits. Even allies of the United States are not safe here. Thanks to Snowden, at the end of October 2013, it was leaked that the states were spying on Germany, France, and Spain. The NSA had tapped into 35 phones, which by the way, not just a couple of random dudes, they were spying on 35 world leaders. One of which was German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who called out the NSA after finding out, of course, and said this act of snooping was just unacceptable between friends. Really went personal with the friends comment there. It's like when you show somebody a photo on your phone and they start swiping, like, hi, hello, betrayal, see ya. Now, as you hear this, you're thinking, well, I'm not a world leader, what's the big deal here? Well, it was also reported that the NSA was monitoring phone calls in Spain for the average folk. They monitored about 60 million calls in one month. So yeah, world leader or not, be a little concerned about these guys, maybe. In our number six spot today, we have the Brazil spying scandal. It was reported by The Guardian that Brazil was second only to the United States in terms of the amount of communications that were being subjected to surveillance by the NSA. This means that the NSA were seriously spying on millions of Brazilians, including the emails and phone calls of their president. At the G20 summit that year which took place in Russia, Brazil's president at the time, Dilma Rousseff, had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Obama in reference to this. He said that he would look into it and get back to her, but before he could, more NSA tea was spilled and it was revealed that the agency had also targeted Petrobras, which is Brazil's state oil company. This led the president to call this new information industrial espionage, and as a result, she called off her scheduled visit to the White House and demanded answers. The called off visit was important because it was to be the first state visit by a Brazilian president in about two decades. And although the Obama administration claimed that it was a joint decision made by both presidents, some media outlets described it as the sternest punishment that had been received at that time in response to all of these NSA leaks. This also led Brazil to take a multitude of steps to hopefully get away from the American-run internet. Number five, backup. When Glenn Greenwald kicked this whole thing off in 2013 with Snowden and his reveals, it was this massive security breach Obviously, Snowden was of course in hot water immediately, but he was ahead of the game from the start. See, Snowden had told Greenwald that if anything crazy happens to him, well, he'll just leak even more information. If Snowden was unable to access these encrypted documents on one of his four laptops, for, then it was set up to automatically send those private documents to higher ups, aka the people directly involved in the leak. On top of that, Snowden reminded The Guardian that he has many, many more secrets to spill, specifically the NSA surveillance systems. This is why you make backups. Duly noted, Snowden. In our number four spot today, we have the embassy catastrophe. There was a document from 2007 that was leaked which named 38 different embassies and missions that were so-called targets of US surveillance. This document didn't quite make it clear whether or not these targets were being looked into by only the NSA or if the CIA and FBI were also involved. The document described certain things like bugging fax machines with devices that allowed them to listen in on conversation, and the document also listed the names of different programs that are used within the embassies. The document showed that the embassies targeted weren't just those of countries who seemed to be enemies with the United States, and instead included places like India and Mexico, Greece, and Turkey. It appears as if the goal was to gain insider information into the diplomatic relations between the targets and the United States. The EU embassy in Washington DC was one of the targets on this document, and this leak had the potential to have jeopardized one of the largest attempted free trade agreements in the world 
because shortly after this all came out, negotiations were set to begin between the EU and the United States. The French president at the time made his anger about the situation very public and stated that all future negotiations will only be made under the agreement that the United States cease all unauthorized surveillance of any EU buildings or personnel. Number three, China. I mentioned earlier that summit where the United States originally wanted to call out China for cyber attacks, but instead Snowden leaked a PowerPoint training slideshow and the tables were turned just like that. Snowden revealed himself as this massive spy kid on June 12th, and he said he was planning on remaining in Hong Kong until he was kicked out. But in his first press interview since coming out with all this information, he informed South China's Morning Post that the NSA was hacking Chinese and Hong Kong computers since back in 2009. That's a long time ago. It's like when Avatar 1 came out. That's how long ago that was. More specifically, Snowden said that the NSA hacked the Chinese University of Hong Kong, aka the heart of all internet traffic in Hong Kong. Now, of course, this is eye-opening, but there's many who see this hack attack as a good thing. See, citizens want to know what their government's up to, and honestly, I myself would love to know if the NSA was rummaging through my chats. So a poll was conducted on June 10th and 11, and apparently 44% of Americans were on board with Snowden's outing. They were with him, and 42% of Americans say that he's a bad boy. 57% were not a fan of the NSA's action, while 37% were on board. 30% of folks liked the fact that they were being spied on. That's some weird kind of kink, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you want the NSA in your Dropbox? Let us know in the comments your thoughts below. We'd love to hear from you. In our number two spot today, we have caller information. In 2013, it was reported by The Guardian that according to the documents that were leaked by Snowden, the Obama administration has allowed the NSA to collect different caller information from Verizon. This was done through what was called a quote, business records provision of the Patriot Act that was established under the presidency of George W. Bush. It allowed the government to order Verizon to hand over caller information every single day. The information included things like the time, location, and duration of the call. The information began being collected under the Bush administration in 2001, and they were collected from AT&T, Verizon, and Bell South. Of course, once these documents were leaked and the information became public knowledge, US officials began trying to reassure the public that this surveillance was somehow necessary and was actually a program vital to national security, but many people rightfully felt like the spying was an unnecessary invasion of their privacy. This one is tricky because there certainly is a fine line with these things. And finally, number one. PowerPoint. Nothing sounds less cool than a leaked 41 slide PowerPoint presentation, but when it comes to the NSA, odds are it's going to be a little juicy. This slideshow is used to train US intelligence, and I gotta say, 41 pages? That's it? I did 45 on medieval nights in high school. Step your game up. This program called PRISM cost about 20 million a year, and it was the highlight of this leak. PRISM kicked off back in 2007. Originally, they partnered with Microsoft, but once they were attached to Apple, come 2012, well, that's when things got a little bit fishy, as most things are with Apple, specifically their maps. That was horrible. The PowerPoint confirmed that the NSA has access to servers belonging to massive tech giants like Google, Skype, or even YouTube. Yeah, right here, they're listening right now. So your search history, emails, anything that rolls through those, usernames, passwords, well, they've got them. Even skaterboy69 and Hotmail, odds are they're already looking. You're done. You're canceled, Brad. There was a summit in California, which originally was tense. The United States were accusing China of cyber attacks, but right after Edward leaked this prism tea, they didn't have much power at that summit. China and Europe's citizens weren't too pleased here, and honestly, yeah, it's a pretty, it's a botched meeting. I can understand why. Starting off this countdown, we have the Iran-Contra affair. In the 1980s, the US government made a secret deal to trade missiles and other arms to free some Americans held hostage by terrorists in Lebanon. But then they used the funds from the arms arms deal to support the Contras, a rebel group attempting to overthrow the government in that country. These transactions were a violation of the law. Congress passed legislation barring US aid to the Contras, and they don't negotiate with hostage takers or pay ransoms. So this caused a huge political scandal that almost brought down Ronald Reagan. In our number nine spot today, we have the project. It is said that throughout the last few presidential administrations that the American people were lied to about the progress of the Afghan war, the longest conflict in American history. According to the Washington Post, over 400 different officials, generals, aid workers, diplomats, and Afghan government personnel that were involved in the war deliberately lied to the American people about what was happening in the war and that they hid evidence that the war had become unwinnable.
inevitable. It is said that the documents that revealed this information were generated by a federal project that aimed to examine all of the causes for the failures of this conflict. The project provided 2,000 pages of notes from interviews with all of those involved. In our number 8 spot today we have federal spending. So according to a Harvard Business Review article that was written by Peter Vanderwicken titled Why the News is Not the Truth, he claimed that the media and the government are quote, entwined in a vicious circle of mutual manipulation, myth making, and self interest. He uses the effort in the 1980s to eliminate the federal deficit as an example, specifically focusing on the Graham Rudman Hollings Amendment. If unfamiliar, this was basically the first binding spending constraints placed on the federal budget. Peter states that for many years there were several media outlets that ran hundreds of stories on the debates over this budget and quote the views of all sorts of experts on the urgent need for deficit reduction and the eventual enactment of the legislation. He continues on to say that quote anyone who read a newspaper or watched television news received the message that Congress and the Reagan administration were heroically and painfully struggling to contain government spending and reduce the deficit. This is of course a list of government lies, so where does that come in? Well apparently behind the guise of this diligent work, congressional committees and federal officials were actually increasing spending and adding new programs into the annual spending. Basically the entire article describes how quote, journalists conspired with politicians to create an image of a government fighting to end the deficit crisis, but they ignored the routine procedures that increased the deficit. In our number 7 spot today we have listening in. Back in 2013 when Edward Snowden released a bunch of classified information and documents, it was leaked that the United States was spying on Germany, France, and Spain. It is said that the government tapped 35 phones, and not just anyone's phone, the phones of world leaders. Of course, when some of them found that out after the leak, they were quick to point out how spying between friends is just not cool. It was however also released that world leaders were not the only ones being spied on as it was found that the NSA was monitoring phone calls in Spain and these calls were between just anyone. And it wasn't just some here or there, it was said that about 60 million calls were monitored in just one month. That's so many! So yeah, everyone was definitely a little annoyed to say the least when this information was leaked. In our number 6 spot today we have the Verizon scandal. Again, back in 2013, The Guardian reported that the Obama administration had allowed the NSA to collect different caller information from Verizon. This is again something that was said to have leaked as part of the information that was released by Edward Snowden, and the information was able to be collected through what was called a quote, business records provision of the Patriot Act that was established under the presidency of George W. Bush. It allowed the government to order Verizon to hand over caller information every day. This information included things like the time, location, and the duration of the call. The information began being collected under the Bush administration in 2001, and they were collected from AT&T, Verizon, and Bell South. Of course, once these documents were leaked and this information became public knowledge, US officials began trying to reassure the public that this surveillance was some how necessary and was actually a program vital to national security, but many people rightfully felt like the spying was an unnecessary invasion of their privacy. This one is tricky because there's definitely a fine line when it comes to things like this. In our number 5 spot today we have the embassy missions. This is a secret that was hidden from not only the American people, but also the people that were being spied on and listened to, but it wasn't revealed until 2007 when a document was leaked. This document is one that named 38 different embassies and missions that were so called quote targets of US surveillance. The document didn't quite make it clear whether or not these targets were being looked into by only the NSA or if the CIA and FBI were also involved. The document described certain things like bugging fax machines with devices that allowed them to listen in on conversations, and the document also listed the names of different programs that are used within the embassies. The document showed that the embassies targeted weren't just those of countries who seemed to be enemies with the United States, and instead included places 
like India and Mexico, Greece and Turkey. It appears as if the goal was to gain insider information into the diplomatic relations between the targets in the United States. The EU embassy in Washington DC was one of the targets on this document, and this leak had the potential to have jeopardized one of the largest attempted free trade agreements in the world, because shortly after this all came out, negotiations were set to begin between the EU and the United States. The French president at the time made his anger about the situation very public and stated that all future negotiations will only be made under the agreement that the United States cease all unauthorized surveillance of any EU buildings or personnel. In our number four spot today, we have the Pentagon Papers. Former President Lyndon B. Johnson is said to have kept many secrets and lies about the Vietnam War hidden away until a military analyst leaked the records and exposed the truth back in 1971, right in the New York Times. The Pentagon Papers were a very secret Department of Defense study, and the papers, when leaked, told everyone about the extent of America's political and military involvement in the Vietnam War. President Johnson certainly was not the only president named in these papers, as other names included Harry Truman, Dwight Eisenhower, and John F. Kennedy, who is said to have been extremely misleading about the United States' direct involvement in the war. The release of these papers really only fueled people in their protests against the war, and it was also one of the moments where the public lost a lot of trust that they once had in the government. In our number three spot today, we have Watergate. This is perhaps one of the largest scandals and leaks in history, especially in the history of the United States. In the middle of 1972, there were five men who were arrested for breaking into and subsequently trying to bug the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate Hotel Complex in Washington, D.C. As the year went on and the 1972 presidential election came closer, there was an anonymous source who fed information to Washington Post reporters that, quote, the Watergate bugging incident stemmed from a massive campaign of political spying and sabotage conducted on behalf of President Nixon's re-election and directed by officials of the White House. Despite this information leak and it being reported to the news, Nixon was still re-elected, but he was also under serious investigation. There was a series of Senate hearings, and the Senate even went on to create a special investigation committee. The hearings were broadcast nationwide, and they had witnesses testifying that Nixon had approved plans to cover up administration involvement in the break-in, and that there was a voice-activated taping system in the Oval Office. These hearings captured the attention of Americans everywhere for weeks, and in the end, the United States Supreme Court ruled that Nixon had to release these Oval Office tapes to government investigators, which then went on to reveal that he had not only attempted to cover up what went on, but he also later tried to use federal officials to deflect the investigation. Under the threat of an imminent impeachment, Nixon had no choice but to admit his guilt and resign, making him the only president to do so. His successor, Gerald Ford, ended up pardoning him so he escaped prosecution, but there were 69 other people indicted, with 48 of them later being convicted. This is probably the biggest political scandal in US history, and it revealed corruption beyond what Americans at the time could believe, especially after the Pentagon Papers. It truly changed the way people would look at government leaders forever. In our number two spot today, we have the call. So this is a lie, or maybe deception is a better way to put it, but either way, it came to light when the telephone calls of former President Lyndon B. Johnson were revealed. Basically, a phone call somehow came to light that showed that the then presidential candidate, Richard Nixon, might have negotiated behind the president's back with South Vietnam. Allegedly, South Vietnam ended up pulling out of the Paris peace talks after being told that Nixon would get them a better deal once elected. People believe that he did this because he was concerned that an earlier ending to the war would end up derailing his election campaign, since the war was one of the most pressing campaign issues. In the end, Nixon did end up winning the election by less than 1% of the popular vote. For many years, this was speculated and rumors were swirling, but once the phone calls were released, it seemed to confirm what many believed for years. In our number one spot today, we have the big lie. Okay, we've talked a lot about the United States government today, but of course, 
that's not the only government that has lied to its people. And some of these definitely aren't the most harmful lies told by the government, but this is one that would certainly make that list. Prior to the 1930s, and really the start of World War II, prejudice against Jewish people was not a new thing. Although the people who will call Yahtzees in order to navigate these online guidelines began to perpetrate these age-old lies. With the rise in this hateful group came a national policy that was called, quote, the final solution, which is a policy that we all know now was meant to eliminate Jewish people. To accomplish this terrible task, the leader of this group, who we'll call Madolf Mittler, and his minister of propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, launched a huge campaign that was meant to spread lies to the German people that would make them believe that Jewish people were their enemies. Some of the lies spread were even ones that dated all of some of the lies spread were even ones that dated all the way back to the Middle Ages, and some of them had more modern context but were equally as outrageous, such as the lie spread that suggested Jewish people were to blame for Germany losing World War One. By using Jewish people as scapegoats, they were able to create what is now referred to as the big lie. Mm -hmm. 